today I've got some more candy corn DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we have a grapevine wreath. We're going to take this gorgeous little sign from Dollar Tree. It's the candy corn sign, it says trick or treat. We're gonna take some of this mesh tubing, some ribbon of your choice, a grapevine wreath. I've got some bittersweet, a variety of yellow and orange foliage. Some are from the Dollar Tree and one I think came from Walmart but was thrifted. And then I wanna show you real quick how to fix a wreath that is out of shape. Now this is sort of an oval shape or an oblong shape. You can just take a little bit of uh, floral wire and fix the form whenever it goes flat or you can use a little bit of jute. See there now I got the same width on both sides. It was a little lopsided on one side and that that does happen with natural um, items they shrink and expand so. All right we're going to pull the bow off of here very carefully so we don't peel off the paint and then take a look at these picks. We're going to cut these off not too long but long enough that we have something to thread through the grapevine wreath. So I know I want it to go this way and I'm going to just start adding in my picks. The greenery I chose to add in to the bottom, um, toward the bottom, so like about halfway down I guess, and it's going to go around the bottom and I'm going to keep all of these in the same um, slant I guess, the same angle. going to put them all in kind of going downward till we get toward the middle. And then on the other side, we will start over also going downward. I'll continue along here trying to vary the color a little bit. That way I get a good representation of the yellows and the oranges. I like that this is sort of a rustic look. It is definitely Halloween, but it, I'm certainly feeling the rustic fall vibes in that it is a grapevine wreath, which is woody and the foliage, which is definitely changing colors for fall. So I guess if it didn't say trick or treat, this could actually be fall and Halloween. Now once it's all filled in, I'm just gonna fluff a little bit. Then the little pieces of bittersweet that I took apart, I'm just gonna start adding those in here or there. I want them to extend out uh, beyond the wreath they're going to be farther away from the wreath than the greenery, which I think is a cute look. It gives that little flyaway look that Ramon from Ramon at Home talks about. And I'm just going to add them here and there. I don't, I'm not looking for a symmetrical look on this project. Um, so you see I've got the greenery higher on the right than on the left, but we're going to have a bow on the left. So no worries about that. Now we have to have something to attach this down to the sign and rather than just putting down hot glue and then hoping that it clings, which it won't because the hot glue is going to go right through the wreath, we're going to use pipe cleaners. We're going to add some hot glue and then you can put a little piece of scrap paper over that. That's going to help secure it. And then you can bend these up and we'll be able to thread these through and put them on there and possibly take it off. If you wanted to use this after Halloween, you could just remove this and you would have a beautiful fall wreath, maybe for Thanksgiving. Friendsgiving, whichever you prefer. Now I'm just gonna easily thread this through. This grapevine wreath is not very tightly wrapped. You can see actually light through it, and that makes it easier to attach things down. Just thread it through there and then twist it around. I always add links underneath the video, so if there's anything that you need um, you can find it in my Amazon store most likely, or you can leave me a question. I'll be happy to help you. All right, so here is my bow maker. I made this myself. I am going to link the video on how you can make one. It was very easy, so you don't have to worry about that. Very easy. If you're not able to do it for yourself, if you have somebody who can help you, it would be a great help if you have arthritis, if you have any kind of problems with your hands, this can help you. Um, I'm not saying you have to have it because you can certainly make this kind of bow without it, but I love to be able to use my bow maker. And I want to share with you how you can make one if you got some scraps around and you don't have to spend the money. 
So I'm just going to make these loops the same size on both ends and I have about seven inches for each one. And then the tails are just a tad longer than that. I'm gonna cut that off. This is a sort of a satin ribbon and it has a black stitched wired edge. This black ribbon is very good quality, but it is not wired. But it is stiff enough that it's gonna hold itself and you'll see that soon. This one doesn't have any type of a pattern on it. It's exactly the same on both sides, so we don't have to twist like we did with the orange one. So I'm just getting an idea there of how big I want it to be. And I know that I want it to be about an inch smaller than the orange one that's underneath. So I'm gonna do the same process and just loop over on this side. I like to fold mine in the middle and then push them down. It's a little bit easier for me to handle that way. It keeps it from flipping. And then we'll trim that tail. And then my burlap ribbon is going to go on top of that. This is gonna be a pretty bow, y'all, but you can definitely either skip the bow if that's not your thing, or you could do any type of bow that you've seen me do before that you like. I do have a bow video, so that can help you if you don't like this particular one. Now this white bow is going to be, or cream colored bow, is gonna be an inch smaller than the black one. You can see like little steps, little steps. And this one is wired also. In my experience, if you have a bow that doesn't have wire, you wanna put that one sort of toward the middle. It just works better that way because the wired ribbons around it will give it a little body and that's helpful. All right, now I'm gonna take this mesh tubing and just make like, it looks like a shoelace bow, but we're gonna continue to make loops back and forth, back and forth until we have three or four on each side, whatever thickness you like. You can find this type of tubing at most Dollar Trees in a variety of colors. This one is something I already had on hand. Okay, so then we trim that one off. I'm gonna slip my tie underneath the bottom while I'm holding on to that stack of bows. Okay, so I'm just gonna, just gonna loop it, but not tighten it all the way down. I'm gonna grab it toward the center move it up you can see the indentions where the poles were just slide that right into it then you can pull it just a tad more because y'all give me a hand clap here look what i did i remembered to put the pipe cleaner in the back i mean look at that i did i remembered this time i never remembered to do that once you have tightened it down you can clip it off and start dovetailing those ends. You want it to have a nice finish. If you don't want to dovetail, you can cut it at a slant. But I like the dovetail. And we're going to do each one of those tails the same way, except for the mesh tubing on top. And we can just leave that alone and trim it up later when we get ready. Okay, so now we're going to fluff. We're going to pull the bows up and kind of spread those out. And you see the black is doing great on its own, even though it doesn't have any wire in it. It looks good in there. Gives a lot of depth. I like that. It's pretty. All right, so now we're gonna feed it through and you can see here that I'm putting it a little bit off to the left of the candy corn. I'm feeding it through there just like we did the sign that we put on. And I will pull this tightly, twist it around, and then kind of rotate it down behind. And you can trim it off or you can just fold it over. And when you fluff your bow, you won't be able to see it. Now is the time you can really get an idea of the size of the bow and how big you want it to be. And you can start clipping off the ends a little bit shorter if you need them. And I like these a little shorter. Gives it a little fly away. I think it's pretty that way. But again, do this your own way. With a bow, without a bow, different colored bows, different size ribbon, different amounts, make it as thick as you like, or don't put it on there at all. That is completely up to you, but the good thing is you can take it off after Halloween and just have a beautiful piece on your door without any hint of Halloween. All right, so I'm gonna take some more of this and we're going to make another little bow like we did on the bow maker. So if you don't have a bow maker, you can do it by hand just like this. I'm gonna have two loops on each side and we're gonna add just a little bit of an accent down in the greenery. You can take another little piece, tie it around the middle, tie it in a double knot, 
and then we are going to be tucking that down into our leaves there on the bottom. You can wire this and put it down instead of gluing it if you would like, but it does sit nicely, and it flips out of my hand, it does sit nicely down into the wreath. You can put it kind of on the branch of the leaves so that the glue doesn't sink down in there and just hold it in place with your scissors or a popsicle stick or a finger protector on your hands. Be very careful. We'll do the same thing on this side and press it down and hold it until the glue cools or sets up or dries. And then in order for this not to be in the way, I'm just gonna add a dot, just a little dot of glue to hold these leaves back. Look at that. That's cute. Do y'all think that's cute? I know if you like a modern look, this is not going to be your thing. Certainly not going to be your thing. But my little rustic heart is very happy right now. All right, now we're going to do a pumpkin stack. Almost like a, maybe a topiary, you could call it. Maybe. So this one is one I got from the thrift store. The lights still work, but I won't be using the lights in it. You're going to have a variety of candy corn colored paints, which I love, paint brushes. We're going to start off with some of this yellow. Now, the, I believe this is a sunflower yellow. It's a sort of a goldish yellow, but it happens to match what I have going on in the, the wreath before. So I wanted to use this color. I am just painting over the bottom pumpkin, this beautiful golden yellow color, and the pumpkin on top is going to stay orange. I'm just carefully trying to get up against there without making a big mess. You can add to this, or if you have chalk paint, um, you can either add, I think, baking soda to it. Um, it was a tip that I was given, which of course works and I had forgotten about. Or you can use a chalk paint, whichever way. But I'm running out of chalk paint, so this is what we got. It took me three layers, by the way drying thoroughly in between the layers and it does dry down kind of matte you can see that but i love the color i love that orange and yellow together gorgeous i want to make it a little bit bigger and we need a top to be white right candy corn is yellow orange and white so i'm going to take a little pumpkin not entirely sure where this pumpkin came from but you can get any little random pumpkins at dollar tree and it just happens to fit on the top. And by the way, you can make this with your own little pumpkins. You can just have a large, medium, and small pumpkin, paint them these colors, and put them together. It just so happens that I had this little arrangement that already had two pumpkins together. All right, so I marked it, I hollowed it out, added some hot glue, and now I'm going to hold it firmly down on top, and it looks gorgeous together. I want to use a little bit of this orange I want to call this jute for some reason, but this orange twine, and I'm going to tie it on, not too tight because it'll pop the hot glue line and then you'll have to start all over. But I'm just going to tie it where there's no gap and then wrap it around a few times. And I'm doing this because I don't like the way my line looks where I painted it below. So I want to cover that up and I want both, I want it to look intentional in other words. So it will look intentional if both gaps between the pumpkins look the same. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that right there for this one. You could always add little, little pieces of greenery. You can add whatever you want to do here. But I like the simplicity of this, so I'm going to leave it this way. But you make yours your own. Whatever makes your little heart joyful and happy, that's what you do. By the way, thank everybody who is leaving tips. I want you to do me a favor because at some point I would like to share all these wonderful tips. When you get ready to leave a tip, please write tip when you start talking about it. That way, when I go through the comments, I will see exactly who's leaving tips and I'll be able to give you credit for it at some point. Okay, sound good? All right. Now, I'm going to take this little witch hat that was a barrette that came from a probably Claire's, if I had to guess and I'm going to make a little hat band for it. It's got little silver spider webs, it's black, and it's got a little fur on it, almost like a little boa, so you could actually make your own. And in order to get this hat band to lay flat, I'm gonna cut a couple of little slices in it here and there, add some glue under it, and then lay those folds on top of one another. You don't have to worry about those lines showing up because we're gonna put the rickrack on top, 
and that's going to keep it nice and smooth. So you see there, now it's going to lay flat. Then we'll take that rick rack, put it right on top. So if you don't call this trim rick rack, what do you call it? This kind of stuff was all over the place when I was young. People used it in clothing, little kids' clothing, and little people's hair and all that. So what do you call that? I'm going to take a spider ring from Dollar Tree. It was in, actually, I think the spider web stuff. And I'm going to pull, we'll cut off his little ring band and add him right there to the hat. Look how cute that is. I'm going to pull this little bottom off. And we're going to make, we're going to take this wire and put it in there so I can bend the tip of the hat. So I'm going to add hot glue, put it all the way up to the tip, let that glue dry for just a minute in the tip. Then I'll take the stuffing, poke a hole through it, and then thread it right back up over that wire. And this is just a little piece of, um, it came off of a, uh, the floral picks I was cutting. So that's the wire that I'm using. And look, now you can bend your little hat tip if you want. I'm going to feed this back through where the stem was on the pumpkin, add some hot glue down in there. And then I'm just going to feed it through and sit it down on top of its head. You can take your cool temp glue because this is foam and remember it does tend to melt. Go around and just add the little glue here and there or you could use whatever type of adhesive you want to use. And this is how cute it's going to look. This is it so far. Now we have to add a face, right? So after a little sip of coffee there. I went in to make a face and I like the idea of having like a little ghost face here. So I just took an acrylic paint marker and by the way, those are linked in my store. I do like them. And I'm just going to make some eyes and a mouth. I made a little mess up there, but I just fixed it with my finger. You could always go over it with some paint if that happens. And then this is what the little top one is going to look like. Isn't that cute? Y'all can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Fall to Halloween floral. I had a lot of wonderful comments on the last candy corn floral that I did, so I want to show you one that you can do for yourself. We're going to use the picks from Dollar Tree. We're going to use some flowers from Dollar Tree. So I have moms and mini moms. I have yellow and white floral and I have orange floral and the pumpkin I'm using I found at the thrift store but you can use a pumpkin bucket or a treat bucket whatever you want to use here you could even use a basket I'll take some foam that I had left over and glue it into the bottom once it is set up we'll start cutting our picks apart leave these stems long if you have a deep vessel like mine is if it's deep like that you want to make sure they can reach into the foam or you can make your foam higher. You can use a bigger piece, whatever you want to do here. I'm just going to go around with my darkest colors first on the bottom. So this is my, my orange. I'm going to push those down and twist them around. You see it does take time. Nothing happens quickly. That's going to look wonderful. It does take a little movement here and there. And depending on how many picks you have, I didn't count ahead of time. So I'm just going to push these in until I get them where I like them. You can pull those leaves up to the top of your stem too. You don't have to leave them halfway down. They will slide up and down for you. Now I'll take the yellowy, orangey looking picks and start adding those in. Some of these have berries and some don't. And I'm just trying to kind of, you know, space them out a little bit since this is a round arrangement. I'm trying to space them out just a little. You can move things. I do it all the time. This is not glued down, so feel free to move it. If you look at it and you don't like it, move it. Take it out. Use something else. Maybe you don't like the, the pale colored um, leaves here. Just go ahead and use all of the orange if you want. You don't even have to use orange. You could use burgundy. You can use whatever. But since this is a candy corn video, we're going to go with the candy corn colors. We're keeping it real. Okay. If you like this video, if you share it, it helps me a lot and I surely appreciate it. Okay, continuing along, sometimes these little stems will bend and you just have to keep fooling with them until you get them there. It does help sometimes to put your hand closer down to the bottom and then press it in so that it doesn't bend. I like my florals very lush. 
I like a lot in there, but you do what makes you happy. All right, so the moms are a little bit different. Some of them are larger than the other ones, and I like the variety that it gives us. So the first one I put in had a lot of thickness like this one, you know, really long petals. And then the shorter ones, like the one I put in the top, is a little bit smaller. You're gonna to continue to work around. I generally like to work from the bottom and then go up, and I like for things to be balanced. I can check by turning it back and forth to make sure that it is balanced. You can turn the heads of your flowers, just bend them a little bit, and that will have them facing outwards. It's wire, so you know, you can, you can bend these, you can manipulate these to be exactly how you want them to be. And I encourage you to do that. So this is how it looks so far, and I think it's a good representation of candy corn, the colors in candy corn, right? So we're gonna take the picks that have the three candy corns on them, and I'm gonna put one right down in the middle. Then I'll put one off to the side here and push that down. And then opposite of that, I will add another one. At first, I thought I liked them you know, I wanted to put them in and see how they looked sticking straight out. But I didn't really care for that look myself because you could see the black wires and it just didn't look quite right. It kind of interfered with the shape. So I went ahead and took the longest one in the middle and folded it upward and then used my leaves and my florals to kind of fold around the black stems. So it blends in a little bit better. And I do prefer the way that that ended up looking rather than having them sticking straight out. That's the wonderful thing about that, the variety you can have. So this velvet ribbon that comes from Dollar Tree, you only get like three feet on a roll, so don't be fooled by it. I like it though, and I think it would be perfect for this project. So very simple bow, you saw how I made that here. Very, very simple. You're gonna do an awareness, um, like an awareness shape, and then you're just gonna scrunch the middle up, and now you have two little loops and two tails. I have some very thin velvet ribbon that I'm going to go right around the middle. You can use jute for this, you can use colored twine for this, anything you want in the middle because it will show on this bow. You will see the center of your ribbon. I'm going to tie this off and then we're going to put a pick on it so that we can stand it up so that we can attach it without using a ton of glue. The idea for me in florals is being able to take things apart and use them again. If you really want to save your money, you can take them apart and use them again. If this is something that you want to give as a gift or you want to keep it forever, then by all means, use glue in your foam to hold everything together. So we've dovetailed our ends and our little bow is prim and proper. We're going to add in another stem off of the floral pick. I'm adding some hot glue across the knot and then I'm just going to tie it over the top of that. Now it's gonna be very secure and in place right there. I am using some Gorilla Glue throughout this video here and there. Whatever stick I grab, that's what, that's what I'm using. All right, so now we have a pick and I wanna add it right in the middle of the candy corn on one side. And I think that is the perfect bow for this little arrangement. So there's another option. If you like these projects, please let me know. If you are going to recreate anything that I have made, feel free to email me. My email address is makingitmyown1 at gmail.com. You can email me a picture and I would love to take a look at it. And at some point, I'd love to feature it on my channel. All right, so for one extra touch, if you want to, these little signs came from Target. You can just take these little signs, add a pick on the back. You can use any little sign from Dollar Tree as well to add just another little splash of Halloween to this. Then you can take this sign out and you have another fall arrangement that you can use after Halloween. How about that? Very easy, it's not glued into there so you can take it out. Here is the final reveal of our three new candy corn projects. 
I have a previous video with candy corn and I will have that linked and probably in the cards here for you in case you missed it. We have the little stacked pumpkins. We have our floral here, Halloween to fall floral. And then a grapevine wreath. I believe in all of you. I do believe that we all are given the gift of creativity to some extent. And it's just like any muscle that you exercise, it gets stronger as you work it. So keep trying, start somewhere. I've had lots and lots of comments that make my little heart happy that say that they are now crafting. They didn't have the courage before, but they are now. And I'm so proud of you. You should know that I'm proud of you. You're doing a wonderful thing and it's so good for your soul. Express yourself, it's so good for you. I encourage positivity on this channel and I encourage positivity in your life long after you leave my videos. I appreciate each and every one of you for coming by here. I would love for you to subscribe and be part of this channel family. Sharing my video and giving me thumbs up is an amazing, amazing help for my channel. And I thank you so much for stopping by. Check out the little rectangular box here. I've got another video that I think you're gonna love. I'll see you again soon. Bye.